Hey there, Mark Sedlock with Trade by the Numbers. I want to do a quick video today. I, I got an email this week and it, it really just kind of sparked something in my mind. And I thought it was really important to throw something out there in regards to this very specific subject. Let's just call it expectations. So let's just go ahead and dig in guys and you'll get a really good idea of where I'm coming, where I'm going with this. And guys, before we get started on this video, I want to let you know that I am doing a webinar series. We're going to be meeting twice a month and we're going to be talking about how to build a system, how to build an edge in the market. We're going to be uh, going through really kind of A to Z. I'm going to show you guys exactly how you can take some objective, cr some objective criteria and build your own system. So if you're interested, there's a link in the description, click the link and get on the list. All right, guys, let's discuss why you should care about expectations and setting the proper expectations when it comes to trading. The wrong expectations can have very serious consequences to your trading. So it can cause you to take on too much risk. It can cause you to trade a system before testing or understanding it. That in itself will create bad habits. Let me give you some examples here. So hesitating on entering trades, moving stops too soon exiting winning trades too soon and revenge trading. It can cause you to give up on a system too soon. And guys, this is an important one. It can make you feel like an idiot in front of your friends and family. Think about it. How many times have you gone to friends or family and told them how much money you're going to start making in trading? And then when it didn't pan out and they asked you, Hey, how's it going? You really shied away from the subject. You didn't want to tell them the whole story because felt like an idiot. You weren't going to be quitting your job. You weren't going to be making $100,000 a year within months of trading. And guys, to be honest, none of this is your fault. I mean, think about it. You've been lied to. So here's just a small sample size of the BS that I see in my inbox. This is a great one. And this is the one that, that caused me to, to do this video today. Double your account every 36 days. Oh my gosh. Is that possible? Quit your job and trade full time. And this was, this was saying that you can do this within months. Make 2,500% returns per year. Guys, when you see this, the next time you see some of these, I want you to start thinking in terms of a very skeptical eye. Think of what it really means to double your money every 36 days. Guys, let's walk through it. I'm gonna tell you, I could turn five grand into $5.1 million in a year. <laughs> How could I not sign up for that? You're telling me that I can quit my job and within months I'll be a full-time trader? Guys, you're telling me exactly what I wanna hear. Now, make 2,500% returns a year? Do you realize in, after three years, I could turn five grand into $87 million. Imagine what the next three years look like. Does this even seem realistic to you? Let's just do a comparison. So what I want to look at now is I want to look at, the, at what I call the Traders Hall of Fame. Now, guys, these are what you would consider the best in their class. They are Michael Jordan in trading, right? Richard Dennis. So he turned $1,600 into $200 million in 10 years. He did it trading futures. He did it trading a 100% objective system. That's incredible, right? Now, again, guys, these are the best of the best. Paul Tudor Jones. Guys, he's considered the GOAT, the greatest of all time. He's considered to be the wealthiest day trader alive. He's worth over $5 billion. And over a four-year period, if you were invested in his fund, every $1,000 invested grew to seventeen grand. That's incredible. And again, he did it in futures, and he did it trading a objective system. Ed Sakota. He turned $5,000 into well over $15 million. In over a 16 year period, he did a 250,000% return. He's considered to be the pioneer of systematic trading. John Henry, 
Didn't really have returns on John Henry, but he is worth $2.1 billion, and the majority of it came from trading a rules-based system, and he actually owns the Boston Red Sox. So I thought it was appropriate he made the list. Guys, this group here, they're not even hitting the kind of returns that some of these people are claiming in emails. Now, I don't see their names on here. What I want you to do is I want you to think long term. All right, I want you to think over the next 20 years. What if you can generate a 30% return per year over the next 30 years? Well, you could take five grand and turn it into a million bucks. It's pretty good, right? What if you could do a 40% return over the next 20 years? You could take five grand and turn it into 4.1 million. Look at the difference. Every percent increase makes a huge difference when it comes to compounding. Now, are these kind of returns realistic? Absolutely they are. As retail investors, I consider us very small investors. We have what I call the power of small. That's an advantage of ours. You see, we're not managing hundreds of millions of dollars or even tens of millions of dollars. We're only managing our little accounts. And so for us to make a 30% return on 5,000, it's a lot easier than a money manager who has a fiduciary responsibility to all of his clients and he has to make sure that their investments are safe. And if he's taking individual positions, he's going to do what's called hedging. And hedging is basically buying insurance on a position. So think about it in terms of, a, of car insurance. If you go buy a car, the first thing you're going to do is go buy insurance. Well, it, that's a cost. Okay. If you drive for six months and you don't get in any accidents... Well, you don't get your premium back. You have to pay a premium for the next six months. Hedging is much the same way. You have a position and you buy insurance. So that's going to reduce your profit. It's going to lower your return. Well, this is why we have a distinct advantage over money managers. We don't have to go out and hedge. If we have a system that we know works, we have defined the edge for the system, over a long period of time, then for us to make a oversized return is not nearly as challenging as some of those guys. Here are what I consider to be the three keys to a winning system. Very simple. One, it has to be verifiable. You have to be able to objectively identify where's the trade, where's my entry, where's my stop, and where's my target. If you can't verify those things, then the system is not objective and you need to move on to a new one. It has to be repeatable. A 2,500% return, well, maybe that person that's emailing you is talking about a single position and they made a 2,500% return on a, on a stock option. Yes, that's possible. I've done that. But here's the problem. How do you repeat it? And then the system must fit your personality. So I want to use John Henry as an example. So John Henry, his system would take very large drawdowns. John Henry is very disciplined. He knew his system would take large drawdowns, sometimes up to 60%. But he didn't stop trading it because he knew that it was still behaving inside of its parameters. Now, if you have a system that has the potential to lose 60% and you can't handle that, then you're going to stop trading that system once it hits that drawdown. And the worst thing that's going to happen for you mentally is watching that system go from down 60% and doubling or tripling over the next several months. That would be devastating to watch. So you, ha you have to find a system that meets the risk criteria that you're comfortable with, the drawdowns that you're comfortable with, so that you can trade every trade. All right, guys, talk soon.